Oh, welcome back my gardening friends. Well, the allotments are getting busy now. There's lots of people about. People are busy and working. And we're in the polytunnel and it's about time I got some of these uh, carrots sowed. I've done a few. Uh, we'll be sowing the uh, sweet candle F1 in uh, this bed all the way uh, down. So I've set out where the carrots are going to go. I'm not leaving these yoghurt pots on this time. So what I normally do is uh, press the yoghurt pot down, put three seeds in uh, and leave it there. But I've got that many this time, I'm not going to bother. So this bed here, you can see where I've actually put, uh, done the holes. I've actually uh, used the dibber to core the holes out. These were full depth of my dibber and they have yet to have uh, a circle of multi-purpose compost on and then I add the three seeds so that's what you can see here now I set about here not thinking what I was doing and I ended up filling the cores on those two rows with multi-purpose now, multi-purpose has got a few ingredients in there that might make the carrots fork. So, didn't change it, just left it as it was. And the rest then have got the uh, cocoa core, which uh, I'll uh, show you sh shortly. So, having these circles, I know roughly where the carrots will be. So, it just make it easy to weed. And we need to pull the weeds out very regularly. That way we don't get mixed up. So I'll set the tripod up and I'll show you first of all uh, sowing a few seeds and then some where I'm coring them out and putting the cocoa koi in. So I've just been using the, uh, the yoghurt pot. Just making a, a bit of a circle using the pot just to uh, so I know exactly where these are going. And then I'll get the uh, seeds. So I'll just tend to just open that up a little bit. Now I've got the trusty piece of cardboard and the sit, but I have found uh, it is just a, a little bit easier just to uh, tap them in. And we want uh, three pistachios, so we've got three in that one. make sure we've got good contact just open those two up so I know I haven't done them and that's basically it they'll just get a good water and hopefully uh, the seeds will just go straight down and go uh, into the cocoa koi right down into the bottom without forking right down to where the uh, manure is so I'm gonna finish these other two so I know where I am so that's another four stations done and there's quite a few on here now we've done the pH test and it's looking like it's between um, 7 and 6 so hopefully that's not adding any lime because Brian from Allotment Life did say probably wouldn't need nothing uh, so we're running between as I said six and seven so is that correct uh, for the uh, root crops we'll just move on there to where I actually prepare the uh, the core so we've moved down to this uh, bed here now and 
Where are we? There we are. All I'm doing at the moment is just dipping a hole. We're just making a mark so that I know the rough spacings. So I've just done those few. Let's take those off now and they can be moved down to the next one. And then we can uh, go right down. I've been done full depth. I didn't do, I only went to about there on the first lot. And the second bay, I've done the full all the way just to try it. The soil needs to be damp so that it doesn't uh, fall in on itself. So I'll just get um, the Coco Koi. I hope you can see that guys, the light's not brilliant. Okay, so uh, I've got the uh, pop pop, um, the juice carton and uh, all I've been doing is basically filling it like that. This compost cocoa koi is very uh, dry which is ideal for this I do try not to spill it so basically I'll do that to all of these now then that way can water it really well and let it soak in like I did these uh, these others so just for reference um, this dibber's uh, 35 centimeters or 350 millimeters long uh, or uh, 14 inches so it'd be nice to get some uh, carrots uh, like that so just have a quick look I'm not going to uh, bore you completely as you can see there now these stations are ready I'll complete all this wet this down to make sure that cocoa coir is really uh, damp and wet this was done a few days ago one evening as you can see it's just started to dry out a little bit but only on the surface so it gives me a good indication where it is and I'll finish those two rows off so I don't uh, uh, get lost and we'll just keep damping this down now and pulling any weeds out that aren't uh, within those circles so while we're here we may as well see what's going on in the polytunnel what I've been sowing uh, we've got some uh, radish French breakfast I planted those or sowed those on the 24th of March and then we've got some uh, lettuce this is all my old lettuce so what comes comes what doesn't doesn't these are the uh, giant swedes I'm very tempted now to get those out the cabbages are still okay at the moment these are the giant cabbages they'll be eaten if they're not shown uh, we've got uh, money maker now these have got caught with the frost a little bit so I'll have to be careful of those and then we've got another container of uh, radish French breakfast. The red cabbage, they're quite a large cabbage and it's uh, that's the variety that I've used. Again these have been scorched a, a wee bit and they're the Gigantimos and then these are the giant green cabbages that I've had sent me and these are the sea red onion and calce onions that I'm trying to go to seed. Still haven't separated them. I must try and do that today while it's busy outside while I can't film. Well, I will film. And these are the shop bought cherries. I bought the, the brassicas up because they do tend to get leggy in the um, grow room. So these are the pointed cabbage. We've got some Cape Horn on the left two rows and we've got some red rookie there another two rows giant onions going through and uh, I purchased this the other day so that's come from you supporting my channel I'll let you know what I do buy 
from anything that I get. And we're just moving down there, the giants, onions, giant carrots. Uh, at the moment I've got two giant parsnips. And these are the Dan's onions. Uh, they'll be much better once they're actually in these. Just finding time. Just while it's like this, we don't really want uh, to be planting anything outside. So we've got lots of carrots, different seed from different people. And the peas, the gutter peas. You can always tell when they're uh, just starting to uh, emerge and push all the soil up. No mice activity. And overall, very good germination. And we've got the same on this side. You see, the, the actual peas do tend to push themselves out as well. Uh, it doesn't hurt them. But yeah, I'm uh, pleased with those. And uh, when they get uh, about this high, we'll be getting them outside. I'll be adding this video into my playlist of the uh, how we started off and how we built the polytunnel raised beds so if you want to see uh, from the start how we've laid all the materials hopefully to solve the issue with a few of the carrots that forked last year no doubt we'll get some fork anyway but you can only try your best happy gardening to you all till next time my friends ta for now